What is up guys, DZ here. Welcome back to another OCG card reveal video. Yesterday, a bunch of hero cards were revealed, eight of them out of the upcoming Power of the Elements core set, and one of them out of the History Archive collection. What's kind of wild though, is that instead of just giving us eight random hero support cards in Power of the Elements, these cards that were revealed yesterday are all about elemental hero Neos. The History Archive collection card is just a generic hero support card, which is still pretty nice, but the eight cards from Power of the Elements are all about Neos, which is a really nice change of pace. Neos is probably one of the worst heroes in the game right now in terms of all of the different types of hero cards out there. I mean, let's be honest here, compared to Vision heroes and Mast heroes and Destiny heroes and even the other E heroes that aren't Neos, Neos does look pretty bad by comparison. But it looks like Konami is finally trying to push in Neos as a viable hero archetype, which is a pretty exciting thing, and I know a lot of people are excited for these cards. By the way, one of these cards has caused a bit of a stir online, so in today's video, I'm going to talk about that as well later on. Without further ado though, let's take a look at the first card, Elemental Hero Spirit of Neos. By the way, as you guys can probably tell for whatever reason, these ones do not have anything other than their artwork and their stats and their effect. We don't have a picture of the actual card, so on Yu-Gi-Oh! News TCG, which is where these images come from that is why we only see the card artwork there now I will mention here that we do know the attack and defense stats of a lot of these cards but for whatever reason that information was not shared on these posts so for example this card has 2500 attack in 2000 defense anyway this card says you can only use the one two and three effect of this cards name each once per turn when an opponent's monster declares an attack you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position and if you do it cannot be destroyed by battle. If this card is special summoned, you can add one spell or trap that mentions a hero monster's name or one polymerization from your deck to your hand. During your main phase, you can shuffle this card into the deck, and if you do, special summon one elemental hero normal monster from your deck. So kind of an interesting card here. I do want to mention with the second effect, you can either search a polymerization or a card that mentions a specific hero monster in the game. It can't just mention the hero archetype as a whole. So for example, if the translation for this card is correct, which I'm sure it is, this card could not add E emergency call to your hand. That lists a hero monster because it searches a hero monster, but it doesn't specifically list a hero monster's name in its text. So I think this card is fine. I wish it had a better special summon effect. It doesn't really have a reliable way to special summon itself as it stands right now, so you'd probably have to use another card to bring it out, which isn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, there are plenty of hero cards that special summon hero monsters, but it would have been nice if this card had an effect that could special summon itself really easily on turn one, as opposed to this like clunky battle phase effect. Next up, we have Cross Keeper, an upgraded form of that old Cross Porter card. This is a level two Dark Warrior effect monster with 400 attack and 400 defense. It says you can only use the one and two effect of this card's name each once per turn. You can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard, special summon one elemental hero or or one Neospatian monster from your hand or graveyard, but if you special summon it from the graveyard, its effects are negated. If you special summon an elemental hero fusion monster or monsters while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card, draw two cards, then place one card from your hand on the bottom of the deck. So this card is actually one of the better new support cards for this Neos and Neospatian deck. I think both of this card's effects are extremely good for a Neos deck. The free extender ability is great, and I mean, yeah, it does negate the effects if you revive the monster from the graveyard, but if you revive Neos, you don't really care, and if you revive a Neospatian, I mean, honestly, a lot of those cards don't have that good of on-field effects anyway, so this is just a good way to revive a monster for fusion material. The graveyard effect is an excellent draw ability that really does help fix your hand. I like abilities that let you draw cards and then have you put back a card as opposed to having you discard a card. I remember with Phantasme a lot of the times you could put back a Garnet, for example, so Crosskeeper should be a really nice addition to modern Neos decks. Next up, we have Elemental Hero Shining Neos 
Neos Wingman, a level 8 light warrior fusion effect monster with 3100 attack and 2500 defense. For material, this card requires elemental hero Neos, of course, plus one Wingman fusion monster. There are a few different ones to choose from there, and it says must be fusion summoned. You can only use the one effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card is special summoned, you can destroy cards your opponent controls up to the number of different attributes on the field. Gains 300 attack for each monster in your graveyard, cannot be destroyed by effects. If this card destroys a monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's original attack. On paper, I like this card's effects. I think all three effects are pretty darn good. Even the attack boost can get pretty crazy with just a few monsters in the graveyard. Where this card gets a bit worse though is with that summoning condition. It's not that it's impossible to bring this card out. Getting to Neos is pretty easy and there are ways to get to a wingman fusion monster and as you'll see in a moment they did print a new card that can help you do that but I think that it is going to be a pretty big investment to ask of players and while the effects are good they might not be enough to offset the minus in card advantage that you'll probably have to take to bring this card out. It certainly is a nice boss monster and if you do bring it out and you can blow up your opponent's board obviously it's going to be a pretty good monster but will you be able to do that reliably? That part I'm not so sure about. Next up we have Engage Neospace and I'm going to be honest here when I saw that card name I thought this was going to be like a Sky Striker Engage for Neos and Neospatian cards which would have been insane but here's what this card actually does. It is a normal spell card that says you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck the turn you activate this card except fusion monsters. Send one Neospatian monster and one elemental hero monster to the graveyard, one from your hand and one from your deck. Special summon one Neospatian monster or one level 5 or higher elemental hero monster from your deck if it is an elemental hero Neos that gains 1000 attack. And if you do, add one Palmarization from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So this card seems alright, maybe I'm underestimating it, but this to me at least seems like a weird case where it's not the cost of the card that's holding it back, I think the cost is fine, you know, it gives you options. You only have to have either a Neospatian monster or an elemental hero monster in hand to use this, and I even think that filling up your graveyard could help you combo off, but the real problem with this card is that I think the payoff doesn't matter enough. I mean, I could be wrong about it, but special summoning one Neospatian monster from your deck or one level five or higher E-hero from your deck really isn't that big of a deal in my opinion. I mean, like I said, I don't know if I'm wrong about this, but it doesn't seem like that big of a payoff. The cost is fine. I really do think this card is well designed, but I really feel like the effect isn't that big of a deal. But if you guys know of any combos with this card, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I could be wrong about this one. Next up, we have Instant Contact, a new normal spell card, and this one is actually the one that caused a bit of controversy online. See if you can spot why that is, but I will talk about it in just a few moments here. This card says you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. Pay 1,000 life points, special summon one at level 7 or lower elemental hero or Neospatian monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions, but if you do not have elemental hero Neos on your field or in your graveyard, the summoned monster cannot attack, its effects are negated, also return to the extra deck during the end phase. So on paper, this is the way that you want to bring out a wingman fusion monster to special summon that big boss monster we looked at a few moments ago. I think this does a pretty good job of doing that. This is basically an instant fusion type card for hero decks and on paper I think that sounds pretty good. We might not know the full extent of all of the combos that you could theoretically perform with this card at this moment but I think this will be a card that hero players consider playing in their decks even if they're not necessarily playing elemental hero neos decks. I think that this is just a good generic piece of hero support. So why are people talking about this card online? I mean the effect isn't that crazy. It is good but it's not like overpowered? Well, it's actually the artwork that people are talking about. So this card's artwork is inspired by a moment from the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime. Yu-Gi-Oh! News TCG posted a comparison picture on their Twitter, and basically you can see here that the difference is that in this card's artwork, you don't have Air Neos. Now you do have in the background there, Air Neos' wings, which you can see, but there's not like his face and his upper body and stuff like that. So Air Neos has a bit of history behind it. it has kind of a conspiracy theory as well. It was a cover card for Strike of Neos back in the day, but it's never been reprinted since then. It only has that one print in that set as either an ultra rare or an ultimate rare. And that's not that crazy. I mean, it's a little bit weird, but it's not
not like that wild, but a lot of people seem to think that Konami does not own the rights to Air Neos, so they can't reprint it or feature it in card artworks or feature it in promotional material. Now, I don't know how accurate that is, but it's really weird that Air Neos is not in here, but his wings are kind of in the background when all of the other Neos fusions, at least the main ones, are featured in this artwork. So I'm not really sure what happened here. I'm not sure if like they'll add it later. That seems pretty darn unlikely. And like I said, I do not know how valid the theory is, but it does beg the question, why is Air Neos not featured in this card's artwork? Why has the card not been reprinted throughout the years? I mean, clearly like Konami can use its artwork in some things because it is on like the Yu-Gi-Oh card database, for example, but did you know Air Neos is not in Master Duel? So there's so many things that are pointing to like Konami is not allowed to use Air Neos, but it just seems so random to me of all the Neos fusions. I really don't know what to believe here, but that is why this card is getting talked about so much online right now, just in case you guys didn't know. Anyway, let's continue on. We still have more hero cards to cover. This video is probably going to be way too long, but next up we have EN Wave, a continuous spell card that says you can only use the one and two effect of this card's name each once per turn. If your elemental hero monster or monsters is used as material for a fusion summon and sent to the graveyard or banished, you can special summon one Neospatian monster or one elemental hero Neos from your deck. If a Neospatian monster or monsters and or elemental hero Neos is shuffled from your field and or graveyard into your deck and or extra deck, that is a lot of and ors, you can special summon one elemental hero monster from your graveyard. Not a bad card necessarily. It's not really a starter card. You already have to be playing the game to really make use of this card's effects. You have to not only have a way to fusion summon, but also you have to have the right monsters that you want to use for a fusion summon to really get use out of EN Wave. So I'm not sure how likely it is that this card will be played, but it could be a pretty nice addition if you really want to go in on like fusion summoning every single turn because it is a continuous spell so it could get you like reoccurring value over many turns. We also have have Fusion Exceed, a very interesting new quick play spell card. This one says you can only activate one card of this card's name per turn. Target one face up monster on the field. Reveal one elemental hero monster, one neospatian monster, or one at level 10 monster from your hand, deck, or extra deck. And if you use the targeted monster as fusion material this turn, you can treat its name as the revealed monsters. Also, if you have elemental hero neo center side of the field and or in your graveyard, send the revealed monster to the graveyard. Otherwise, if it was revealed from the hand, shuffle it into the deck. Now, I don't think you really want to shuffle back anything from your hand, so ideally you are revealing a card from your deck or extra deck. In that way, I think the card is all right. I mean, do you really care that much about changing a card's name? Probably not, but if you were going to change a card's name for a big fusion summon, this would be one of the better ways to do that. The last reveal out of Power of the Elements is Favorite Contact, a normal trap card that says you can only activate one card of this card's name once per turn. Special summon one fusion monster from your extra deck that lists a hero monster as material by placing the materials listed on, on the bottom of the deck in any order from among your cards in your hand, on your field, in your graveyard, and or your face up banished cards, ignoring its summoning conditions. And if you placed elemental hero Neos, the summon monster cannot be returned to the extra deck. Not a bad card, and I'm probably going to sound like a broken record here because I've said this so many times in videos about so many OCG reveals. This card card isn't really that good as a trap. It would have been a lot better even as a normal spell card. You know, it doesn't have to be a quick play spell, but even as a normal spell card, this would have been a lot more powerful. But as a trap card, I'm not sure if it'll be able to keep up with other modern cards. Finally, we have Wake Up Your Elemental Hero, which I believe is a reference to a song played in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. This card is from the History Archive Collection. It is a level 10 light warrior fusion effect monster with 2,500 attack and 20 2100 defense. This card takes one elemental hero fusion monster plus one or more warrior monsters. This card cannot be special summoned except by fusion summon. This card gains 300 attack for each of its materials and can attack monsters each battle phase up to the number of fusion monsters used as materials. So it's kind of like a chimera tech but for hero cards. At the start of a damage step in which this card battles a monster, destroy that monster and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. That could do a ton 
of damage if you were attacking a big board that your opponent has. I do like that effect quite a bit. If this fusion summon card is destroyed, you can special summon one warrior monster from your hand or deck. And that is any warrior monster. It doesn't ignore the summoning conditions, but holy crap, is this card crazy? I'm not sure what the most reliable way to bring it out would be, but this thing is an absolute powerhouse if it hits the board. It's basically like an ultimate conductor tyranno plus a chimera tech, and it has that awesome floating effect as well, which could summon a pretty intimidating monster card. So wake up your elemental hero is definitely a big flashy fusion monster, and I hope someone out there finds a way to use it because it does seem like a very fun card. Anyway, that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry it was a bit longer than my normal OCG card reveal videos, but I wanted to cover all nine new hero cards in one discussion. Anyway, I will see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Goodbye.